Uh, good morning, everyone. Just confirm me. Am I audible to you? And the PPT is visible, correct? Vasha, confirm me whether I am I audible? Everything is perfect from my side, right? Okay, fine. Okay, so from today we are going to start the ecology portion. Okay, so without any delay, we will start in today's class. Okay, so what is ecology? Uh, ecology means study about an ecosystem. And what is ecosystem? An ecosystem is nothing but an interaction between biotic and abiotic factors. Okay, interaction of uh, biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So that particular organisms with their own environment, the interaction between these two things, that is the interaction between organisms and their physical environment. So study about these things will be an ecosystem, right? Now, what is this biotic and abiotic factors? We have studied that interaction between biotic and abiotic factors will be the ecosystem. Now, what is biotic and abiotic factors? Means biotic factors is nothing but a living organisms, okay? Like plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms, those who can respire, okay? So that will be coming under the category biotic. And the abiotic factors means they are the non-living components. They are nothing but uh, soil, temperature, air, minerals, like that. So these are all the things. Now, what is exactly happening between these biotic and abiotic factors. See, the abiotic factors, we know that soil, water and air. Okay, so biotic factor, uh, biotic factors means that is nothing but those who make use of these abiotic factors. Like, see, they are taking biotic factors that is living organisms that is taking air for their, uh, the air is nothing but an abiotic factors. So a plant or animal that is taking an air for respiration, Okay, so they are dependent on this abiotic factors. They are dependent on the water. They are dependent on the soil for taking the nutrients. So the interaction between all these things, biotic and abiotic factors, that includes the nutrient cycling, energy flow, and ecological process. So these are all the interactions between the biotic and abiotic factors. Now, what will be the structure of this particular ecosystem? See, when it comes to the structure, what we are having, we are having a producer, okay? Always plant will be the producer and those who consume these producer will be coming under the consumers and generally the consumers are herbivores or carnivores. Herbivores means those who are a plant eaters. Carnivores means those who are an animal eater, okay? So those who are dependent on the producer, that will be calling as the consumer. Now, after the consumer, when these organisms die, they are decomposed from the ecosystem by the decomposer and those decomposers are mainly the bacteria and fungi. Okay, so now what are all the types of ecosystem? Terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Terrestrial means we know that that will be the land ecosystem and aquatic means water ecosystem. In case of a terrestrial ecosystem, there will be a forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, desert ecosystem. So all the land-based ecosystem will be coming under the terrestrial ecosystem. An aquatic ecosystem will be the water-based ecosystem that includes the freshwater and marine water. In case of a freshwater, it will be the lakes and rivers. In case of a marine water, it will be the ocean and the coral reefs. Okay, so this will be the types of the ecosystem. So the next thing will be the, what will be the functions of the uh, important thing, functions of the ecosystem. Primary production. Here, what is meant by primary production? We know that primary production uh, will be done by the plant. So that will be, we are calling this plant as a producer how they are uh, producing an energy okay so we know that the process of photosynthesis that is the thing explained in here conversion of sunlight into and chemical energy into chemical energy by plants so this will be the primary production and decomposition will be the breakdown of organic matter into the nutrients okay so this organic matter will be 
convert will be breaking down into a smaller particles and that will be converted into a nutrients and this nutrients will be taken by the another organisms or oh, how the nutrient is entered into the cycle nutrient cycling here the new seek uh, recycling of nutrients between the organisms and the environment how is it possible we have studied about the nitrogen cycle phosphorus cycle carbon cycle sulfur cycle so all these nutrients will be in the cyclic form will be exhibiting in the cycle form which means what See, the animal excrete, then in the excreta, there will be the ammonia and that will be taken by the plants and the ammonia is, be, uh, the nitrogen is taken uh, into the plants by the excreta of the animal or from the atmosphere as a nitrogen and this will be converted into the nitrate and nitrate, NO3, NO2 and after that it will be converted into ammonia. And after that, it will be, once again, it will be converted into the nitrogen and it will be released into the atmosphere. So, once again, it will be taken into the plants and it is fixed by the plants, more specifically the leguminous plants. Okay, so this is how the nutrient, uh, nutrient cycle between the organisms and the environment. Now, what are all the services provided by the ecosystem? Now, these ecosystem will be provide services like air and water purification, which means what? We are taking the oxygen and that oxygen will be released by whom? Plants. And we are releasing the carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide will be taken by the plants. Okay, so this is how the air and water is getting exchanged and the water and the air is getting purified and the climate regulation. We have a climate regulation like summer season and winter season and habitat provision for biodiversity. We have a lot and lot of organisms. We have a variety of organisms. Now, these are all the services provided by the ecosystem and whatever be the organism in the ecosystem is, Definitely, they are destined to do a certain function. All the organisms have ecological niche of their own. Okay, not they have their own functional role in the ecosystem, right? Now, what will be the impact on human? Human impact. What we are do, we are we what we are doing to destroy the environment. Okay, and more specifically, that will be the deforestation. Nowadays, we the concrete buildings are very 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 higher. Okay. One single person have a lot of desire to build five to six houses. Okay. So for that thing, definitely we have to eradicate a larger number of uh, trees. And, and uh, see, if we destroy one particular tree and the organisms which depend on these trees, will, everything is getting affected. Okay, here the food chain and food, food web, everything is getting affected. Not only this particular tree is getting affected. The insects which seeks a nectar from these tree, the and the organisms, the, the insects or the organisms which seek habitat as, uh, which seek uh, this tree as a habitat, everything is getting affected, right? So it is not just we are eradicating only one particular tree. We are, er we are eradicating one uh, group of organisms, okay? Everything is getting affected. So that will be the impact we producing to the environment, okay? It is not only the deforestation, pollution. How the pollution is happening? See, we are nowadays the use of public transport is getting reduced gradually. It is not a gradual, it is a drastic reduce because everybody have their own, uh, own bikes, own cars and each bike, each car, they are producing a lot and lot of pollution to the environment. Sulfur, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, lead content. So this is the most poisonous and everything will be released into the atmosphere. So all these pollutants will be causing the greenhouse effect see this will be the uh, greenhouse effect is nothing but uh, these these are all the gases which makes the earth more heat okay so you, you should know that the concept of insulation and terrestrial radiation terrestrial radiation see whenever the all the heat from the sun to the earth, it is transparent. So, for example, let me explain you very, very, wait a minute. So, this will be the sun. This will be the earth. Okay. So, you should know that what are all the things, uh, the heat which is coming from the sun, it is transparent to the earth, which means what? It can easily pass into the earth. But what are all the gases 
released as a result of pollution, it is locked within the earth. Okay, it is not escaping from the escaping out of the earth. So the, what the sun, the radiation which is passing from the sun to the earth will be the insulation. Okay, insulation and the gases which is trapped within the earth, it is called as the terrestrial radiation. Now all these gases will be circulate within the air and it is not escaping from the earth. So it results in the greenhouse effect. So this is what exactly the greenhouse effect. It results in the greenhouse effect. Okay, so as a result of greenhouse effect, what will be the effect? It will be the global warming. Okay, so from when compared to the last year, this, this year will have a lot of heat. Okay, from uh, when compared to this year, next year will be the earth will be more heat. So what are all the things though? Everything will be the thing which was created by we, the human beings. Okay, so this is what uh, the impact produced by the human beings. Okay, so the class will be a little bit deviate from the class. I have uh, touched the geography part also. So uh, this is the thing. Uh, see, when it comes to the pollution, you know all these things. Okay, that's why I explained all this. Now, how we can manage this? Conservation efforts involves preserving biodiversity, restoring degraded ecosystem, sustainable resource management. So now the human beings have been uh, realized that we are destroying the environment. So everybody in the major in major cities like Chennai, metropolitan cities in the terrace, they are uh, tend to create a terrace forming. So these are all the improvement we have uh, noticed now. Now. Now, what are all the cycles? We have uh, different uh, cycles like carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, and phosphorus cycle. Now, what is carbon cycle? The movement of carbon between the living organisms, atmosphere, oceans, and earth crust. Okay, so all these movements, it is see what are all the carbon present in the atmosphere will be taken by the organisms which is living in that particular atmosphere and all these carbon present in the atmosphere will be from the earth crust and the organisms will be present in the uh, oceans. We are taking, we are, uh, we are uh, food lovers, uh, seafood lovers. Okay, so many human beings are a seafood lover. So obviously the organisms which lives in the uh, ocean, uh, if it have a carbon, definitely that will be entered into the human being. So this is how the carbon is getting um, circulating among all these organisms. Now, what is nitrogen cycle? Once again, the nitrogen is getting circulated between soil, water, and atmosphere okay here there will be no ocean the that will be the soil water and the organ atmosphere in case of a phosphorus the phosphorus it is getting circulated through soil water and living organisms this is how the phosphorus is getting circulated now what are all the process involved in the carbon cycle photosynthesis respiration decomposition and combustion in the photosynthesis the plant is getting absorbed carbon dioxide we know that uh, from the atmosphere the plant is taking the carbon dioxide to make the glucose see what is the uh, uh, re reaction of uh, photosynthesis carbon dioxide Six CO two plus twelve H two O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, it is getting converted to what C six H twelve O six. And what is this C six H twelve O six? This is nothing but a carbon dioxide. Sorry, glucose. That is carbohydrate. This is a carbohydrate, and more specifically, glucose. So the plant is taking the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and it is getting converted into a carbohydrate. That is, glucose is a primary source. So that is what a uh, carbon dioxide. So this is a carbon, carbon and oxygen combinedly called as the carbon dioxide. So carbon is uh, taking in the means of photosynthesis. Now the second thing will be the respiration. In the respiration, organism release carbon dioxide. So now the human beings is taking a carbon dioxide. So this is the oxygen released by the plants through the process of photosynthesis. This oxygen is getting ta play taken by the human beings. Now this human beings is taking the carbon dioxide and releasing what? Releasing the, taking the oxygen and releasing the carbon dioxide. Now here they are really, they are producing the carbon dioxide through the metabolic process. Right? Now. 
decomposition. Here the decomposes breaks down an organic matter that is the one releasing the carbon dioxide. So everything uh, this carbon dioxide will be releasing as a byproduct. Now what is combustion? See whenever we are releasing, whenever we are burning something, definitely there will be the release of carbon dioxide. It results in the increase in global warming as a result of a greenhouse effect. Right? Now, uh, my question is, what will be the most important greenhouse gases which causes a global warming? Which green, we see, you should know that the terms greenhouse effect, global warming, greenhouse gases. So, these are all the greenhouse gases which creates a greenhouse effect. As a result, we are experiencing the global warming. So now what will be these greenhouse gases which are causing the global warming? Very good. The most important greenhouse gases will be the uh, carbon dioxide. Okay. It's carbon dioxide, uh, methane and uh, nitrous oxide. Okay. So all these things will be called, will be the major greenhouse gases. Right. Now, what will be the nitrogen cycle? What are all the important processes involving in the nitrogen cycle? First thing will be the plant has to fix the nitrogen. So that is called as a nitrogen fixation. Here, this uh, here the plant is taking the nitrogen from the atmosphere. Now this nitrogen is getting converted into the ammonia. How this nitrogen is getting converted into the ammonia? By the nitrosomonas bacteria. Okay. Now. Nitrification. After the fixing of nitrogen, after the nitrogen is getting converted into the ammonia, the ammonia has to be converted into nitrates, that is NO2 and nitrates, NO3. That too, once again by the bacteria and that will be done by the nitrification. This enzyme, the enzyme involved here will be the nitrogen reductase. Okay. Here that will be the nitrate reductase. Here that will be the nitrate nitrogen reductase. Okay, so after that, after it will be converted into the nitrate and nit uh, nitrate and nitrates, it has been all these, uh, this nitrate once again is converted into a nitrogen gas. How is it possible? By once again by the bacteria and that bacteria will be the denitrifying bacteria. Okay, here the nitrogen is getting back into the atmosphere. Now, assimilation. Here the plants and animals taken up the nitrogen compounds to build up the plants, proteins and the nucleic acid. So, amino acids, we have a nitrogen amino, uh, amino acids which contain the nitrogen. Okay, so these biomolecules will be done, will be prepared by the, with the help of the nitrogen. Okay, so these are all the process involved in the nitrogen cycle. Now, what are all the process involved in the phosphorus cycle? Weathering. Weathering is nothing but a removal of, uh, which means what? Uh, see, uh, it will be initially it will be a rock, and after certain time it will be in the uh, it will be in the sand form. Okay, that is small breaking down of a larger molecules of rock into a smaller particle. This is called as a weathering. Okay, breakdown of rocks, and during the breakdown of these particular rocks, there will be a release of a lot of phosphate ions, and that phosphate ions will be released into the soil or water. Now, what are all the phosphates will be released into the soil and water that has to be absorbed by the plants from the soil? Okay, and after it is getting absorbed by the plants from the soil, it is getting assimilated. Assimilated means what? The phosphorus now enter the food chain. Okay, see, see the say initially it was a rock, and after that breaking down of rock result into the sands. Uh, and this particular smaller sand also contains a phosphorus. Now these phosphorus will be in the soil or water. Now the soil, uh, in the soil, the plant is getting grown, and from the soil is uh, this plant is getting phosphorus from the soil. Now it is the plant. What are all the organisms which is eating these plants will also taking the phosphorus from the plants to that particular organisms. Okay, this is what assimilation is. Now decomposition. Now decomposition means what? After the death of an organism accidentally or naturally okay so that after the decomposition certain decomposers which releases these phosphate back into the soil 
okay now see initially it was taken by the plants from the soil and it is enter into the food chain which means what those organisms which eating these plants will be taken will also taken these phosphorus from the plant to that particular organism and after the death of a, that particular organism it will be decomposed and once again it will be uh, released back into the soil and after that it will be in the sedimentation now the phosphorus settles in the sediments eventually once again it is forming the rock okay so this is what see it will it will be starting it will be started from the rock and it also ending as a formation of a rock so that is why we are calling this as a cycle okay that's all about the cycle now how, in which thing in which uh, in which mechanism this carbon cycle plays an important role see this carbon cycle is essential for a protein a pro photosynthesis to form the organic molecules one minute. Okay. See here, in which, in what are all the things the carbon cycle are getting, are useful. See, photosynthesis, for the photosynthesis and regulates the earth's climate by influencing the greenhouse effect. So, carbon plays a key role. See, when it comes to, when it converts into carbon dioxide, definitely it will be the greenhouse gases, which causes a greenhouse effect. As a result of greenhouse effect, we are experiencing the increase in the global warming. Okay, so what is the use of this nitrogen cycle? See, that is very, very, very important for protein synthesis. What protein is consist of? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So these are all the important uh, element which is involved in the synthesis of protein. Okay, so for nitrogen plays an important role for the synthesis of protein and growth of living organisms. It limits the primary productivity in many ecosystem okay so now what will be the use of phosphorus cycle now um, let me explain you in how in what way the dna and rna needs the phosphate we have a phosphodiester bond and definitely the energy source of energy will be the atp and atp means what adenosine triphosphate for this phosphate definitely we are in need of a phosphorus right everybody clear right uh, what are all the human impacts? Once again, the same thing that will be the greenhouse effect. And here, uh, fertilizer use an industrial process that increases the nitrogen in the ecosystem. This causes the eutrophication and the water pollution. Uh, see, there it will be the use of a fertilizer, and as a result, nitrogen content in, in the environment will be higher, and this causes the eutrophication and water pollution. Okay, and also deforestation combustion, this alters the level of nitrogen and it will be results in the impact of the nitrogen cycles. Now, climate change affect the nitrogen fixation rates. Okay, so this phosphorus. Agricultural runoff, wastewater discharge, increasing the phosphorus levels, this causes the eutrophication and mining and fertilizer, this also impact the phosphorus availability. And these are all the uh, climate change. Once again, whatever be the mineral, if it is imbalanced in the environment, results in the cl climate change. Always the climate change will affect the uh, level of minerals. It affects the mineralization. Okay, again the same thing. And what are all the globe? What are all the implications are present in the uh, present globally? See carbon. For carbon, there will be a lot of lot, a lot and lot of agreements for this climate change. We have a, a Kyoto Protocol. Okay, I think uh, Kyoto Protocol is nothing but this is the protocol signed for the climate change, global warming. Okay, climate change mitigation, they are focusing the reduce uh, reducing of uh, carbon emissions. See, nowadays, their uh, government is taking a lot and lot of efforts to reduce the carbon emissions. Okay, it is not the our uh, local government, it is entirely the world government, human. They are focusing to reduce the carbon levels by introducing the electric vehicles. Okay, like that. 
like Paris Agreement address the carbon reducing target. So these are all the things measures taken to reduce the carbon levels and to reduce the nitrogen pollution. They have been in, they have been induced a better agricultural process and wastewater treatment. Now for phosphorus, once again, it will be uh, if there is if there will be any little changes in the agricultural level, definitely it will impact an environment at a greater extent. Okay, so that's all about the cycles. Now, what is the primary function of an ecosystem? Just answer with this question. What will be the primary function of an ecosystem? That will be the nutrient cycling. Very good. And which component of an ecosystem is non-living? That will be soil. Very good. What role do, do uh, decomposers play in an environment? What do decomposers play in an in ecosystem? What do decomposers play in an environment, in an ecosystem? That will be a nutrient cycling. Which ecosystem type is characterized by water-based habitats? Srinu, just kindly mute yourself. Good. Answer the question. Don't keep silent. That will be the marine. Okay, marine ecosystem is the one which includes the ocean, coral reefs, estuaries. Okay, where the where the water is a predominant habitat. Okay, now, which is a critical service provided by the terrestrial ecosystem? Critical service provided by the terrestrial ecosystem, whether it will be the carbon sequestration or oxygen production or water filtration or soil erosion. Critical service provided by the terrestrial ecosystem. Is it a water filtration? It is a carbon sequestration. Okay. See, terrestrial ecosystem like forest, they store the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and mitigating climate change. That is the reason we have to grow more trees because all the trees are taking the carbon dioxide for respiration and they are giving an oxygen. So, when a level of trees are high, all the carbon dioxide present in the environment will be taken by the plants so on all the carbon dioxide has been converted into oxygen and the level of oxygen in the environment is getting higher and this gas is a life saving gases so this is the reason we have to grow lot of trees clear so this is how you have to analyze the question see you know all the concepts right plant is taking the carbon dioxide and releasing the oxygen Okay, so these, this is how the ecology questions will be. Okay, it will be see uh, when, when we see the question, it will be easy. But when we apply the uh, apply the answer, then that will be a critical area. So you have to focus all these things. And the next question will be, which process in the carbon cycle involves the uptake of carbon dioxide by the plants?
which processing the carbon cycle involve the uptake of see whether it will be the photosynthesis or respiration whether it will be the photosynthesis or respiration see plant uh, is uh, taking the carbon dioxide it needs respiration see it needs to respire right that is why we are considering this plant as a living organism just to think uh, whether it will be the respiration or photosynthesis and you are correct that will be the photosynthesis so you should not uh, mix this respiration and photosynthesis okay uh, photosynthesis is the main thing as a as an uh, to maintain the other vital metabolic activities they are taking this carbon dioxide okay for for, for doing certain metabolic process so taking the carbon dioxide is a part of the photosynthesis okay now as a result they are going to produce a glucose and oxygen now, how does the nitrogen enter in, enter the biotic component of ecosystem? How initially we have studied the steps, right? We have studied the process. And what is that? First will be the nitrogen fixation. Initially, the nitrogen is present in the atmosphere that has to be taken from the atmosphere to the plants. And for that, it has to fix nitrogen. That is what a nitrogen fixation is. Now, after that, it will be assimilation nitrification and after that it will be denitrification yeah so the order is very 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 important so first thing will be the nitrogen fixation right see here what they are saying is assimilation is a process by which the plants and animals absorb the nitrogen components to build the proteins and the nucleic acid so enter the biotic component here the question will be see initially it was in the atmosphere definitely through the nitrogen fixation it has to be fixed in the plants okay now it is not enter into the circulation now it has been fixed into the plants that's all okay now when what are all the animals which is taking which is feeding on these particular plants it is getting enter into the other body then then only they are enter into the biotic component of ecosystem here they should they are not confining only the plants okay what are all the organisms which is feeding on these plants only then it will be transferred from this body to that body that is what the process of assimilation is so you are right but initially the uh, nitrogen which is present in the environment will be taken by the plants by the process of nitrogen fixation okay so the that will be uh, so this is not you should not confine this as entering the biotic component of ecosystem so this will be the difference in this question okay now which human activity contributes the most to excess nitrogen in ecosystem among all these uh, four uh, thing four option which in which activity a lot of nitrogen will be released into the ecosystem? Are you sure? That will be agriculture. Okay. Uh, whenever, see, as I said before, whenever we ch just slightly change the agricultural pro uh, process, it will result in a greater impact in the ecosystem or the environment. Okay. So, agriculture. Why agriculture? Because we are using a lot and lot of fertilizer. And what fertilizer is majorly consist of? It is nitrogen. Okay. Now, what is the primary source of phosphorus in aquatic ecosystem? That will be the, very good, that will be the weathering of rocks, okay. Now, 
How does phosphorus leave the biotic component of ecosystem? We have four more minutes. Kindly answer me quickly. How does the phosphorus leave the biotic component of ecosystem? How it is getting leaving from the biotic com component? See, if you are reading the immunology, if you are reading the developmental biology, if you are reading the ecology, each unit has certain language. Okay, you have to understand these language. Okay, see uh, here, how does phosphorus leave the biotic component? Biotic component of the ecosystem leaving the biotic component and what this statement is exactly they are meaning and the answer will be the decomposition because see, Initially, it was rock, right? Initially, it was rock and after that, it results in the soil uh, and in the soil, we have a lot of phosphorus and this are taken by the plants and the plants are eaten by the animals and after that, it will be in the decomposes. Through the process of decomposition, it once again leave the animals, that is leave the decomposes to the soil and after that, it will be result into rock. Now it is leave. See, now this will be the abiotic factors and this will be the biotic factors. Now, this is the biotic components where the phosphorus is leaving to the abiotic. So, this is what a language, this is what you have to understand. Okay, so now the answer will be the decomposition. Which of the following best defines an ecosystem? Most famous question What is ecosystem? Definition of ecosystem. Uh, two minutes remaining, just answer me very quickly. Waking up early, I know it is a big deal, but uh, try to attend the class in the beginning, okay? We have discussed a lot. Kindly go through the recorded class, okay? Okay, and what is ecosystem? A famous question that will be the interaction between the biotic and abiotic factors and the answer will be option A. Very good. Now, what will be the primary role of producer in the ecosystem? What will be the primary role of producer in an ecosystem? Producer. See, uh, this uh, producer, it is the one taking the sunlight and it converted into a chemical energy and that will be the process of photosynthesis. As a result of photosynthesis, they have been the capacity to uh, build up their own food materials. And after that, it was taken by the animals. This is how, so that is initially, it is the one preparing the food okay, from the sunlight. So, this will be considered as a producer. Those who eating the consume, uh, eating the producer will be the consumer. We have a primary, secondary and the tertiary consumer. Okay, so these are all the things in the tropic level. So, this will be the answer. So, that's all about today. We'll meet tomorrow the same time. Kindly join the class at sharp 6 a.m. Okay, tomorrow there will be no compromise. You have to join the class at sharp 6. Okay, is there any doubts? You can post it in the group. And I'll upload the PPT soon after the class. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a good day. Yeah, I'll post it in the group, Basha, topic. Okay.